We come out here, it's a bottle washer that's older than both of us <laughs> combined. Hey, that's a rare thing, right? You are now watching Farming with Duffy Ag. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, you guys get all worked up sometimes in the comments. Let's explain the ladder in a minute. Gotta get my pickup started. It pretty much rained for the last day. We didn't get any of that snow, so most of this stuff is what came off the roof of this. And well, let's see what we get into today. I'm actually dropping some merchandise off. I am gonna do a sale. A moving sale so I just don't have to move as much and we'll clear out some inventory that says Carlisle Massachusetts on it because well yeah the next location is not Carlisle Massachusetts well let me go over the ladder and then we're gonna go on a little road trip and then uh, see what we get into today yeah, I'm actually excited to go up here. It's been a long time since I went and saw this one. Yep. So we'll let this warm up. It does go into high idle by itself. Um, so as far as the ladder, everybody says, oh, open those handles up and it extends out. I know that. But when the ground was frozen, granted we got rain so it washed away all the ice and everything else. When the ground's frozen and you're by yourself, and you got nobody to hold the back of the ladder, opening it up and resting it and climbing on and off something that's already slippery does not make any sense as far as the safety side. See, you just, if I put it on this and I climb up it and I fall down, you guys probably won't see me on YouTube for a little bit. Um, everybody was like, oh, it's, you gotta open it. You don't understand what you're doing. When I bought the ladder, it literally said in this formula, 13.6. What I didn't realize was it meant your body, you can reach to 13.6. So that means standing on that because that's a safe way. But yes, you hit those handles and you can open it up. You can be 22 foot reach, it says. So you guys in the comments, come on, use a little bit of common sense as far as, yes, I know how a freaking ladder works, but you guys are amazing. So, all right. Well, the roofs are cleared off. Um, we might jack this roof up a little bit. Some people have said that. My concern of that is if I push up and we split that crack some more because there is a crack in the front that we flex sealed um, and that just keeps going and going and going. So that's the concern. Previously, we loaded the land all. At some point, we got to move that. Granted, where my tankers are. Somebody asked where the, where the Hool tanker tra trailer was. I moved it out there. Um, it's sitting next to the other, sitting next to the military tanker. But the whole reason the land all got loaded, this is going on a low boy. We got to take the duels off and we got to put the plow frame on and take the plow off of the frame so that we can plow snow with this because where we're going, they have snow. And I have a feeling it will continue to snow, so I want to be able to clean stuff up um, so we can get the trucks in and out. Planter itself, this is going to go on the gooseneck. Um, if you don't know from previously, when you unfold it, you unbolt two of those bolts, this whole tongue pivots, splits in between, and then you can set it on the trailer. So that's how we got it here. That's how it's going, or that's how we got it from Missouri to here. Um, as far as the planter, there's some little things. We got to fix the arm lengths, but we got to do that once we get into a shop with power and a place to work. So I'm very excited to be able to work inside again. So yes, the new property does have a workshop. And it's pretty 32, 34 by 74. So, and some other buildings. So alrighty, we're gonna go jump around. If you haven't done so, merch down below. You know what, cause we're moving from here till we, the day we move, so the merch gets packed and moved. 
we'll do 30% off merch. So, um, moving 30 code, hit that merch store. Anything in stock, there's, there's no large, extra large hats, and there won't be till we move. I'm not doing another order until I'm in the, into the new house. So, moving 30, there's your code. Yeah, gets 30% off merch. You ready to go? You wanna go make some friends? You've never been where we're going. Oh wait, he has. I think he's been there once. You guys never have, but you have seen their products. So we actually came through here a while back. It was dark and the traffic was absolutely horrendous. Um, little Massachusetts. I think this was the start of the Industrial Revolution in the Americas. I believe, I should know that. They do teach a lot of history around here about those periods because it's directly tied to everything. So, uh, Boston Tea Party, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, fighting against the British. So, you get all of that stuff. Paul Revere bought. They redid all this. It used to be like an overpass, an underpass, and instead they put three sets of lights in and made it so all the traffic stops. But growing up this place wasn't really the nicest place and they've done like all these buildings new so it's been a long time since i've actually come through here um in the daytime mckittrick's uh, hardware store there Ooh, what are we doing here um no idea see they got more lights um yeah umass lowell's here so mckittrick's hardware store used to be the spot to go and then they shut down um, but we used to come through here to play hockey pretty much every day and you can see all the old mill buildings and stuff and they still have the working mill um, the history the museum which is absolutely awesome so if you're around or if you're coming through Lowell's not a great place but the, the uh, textile museum is amazing Lowell Spinners Field been a long time since I've been there but Yeah, the textile mills halfway down there in between the bridge, or right before the bridge, the museum. Pretty freaking sweet. So there you guys go. Historical tour of Lowell, Massachusetts, the beautiful city. Um, city's, the city is beautiful, but yeah, it's like any big city. There's, there's some issues. So as long as we're going down memory lane of life, I was supposed to make a turn back there, but uh, I drove up here a little bit more. This used to be the ice huts, and somebody's told me they tore it down. And then my brother drove by a little while ago, and they changed it into um, storage. So let's check out the old hockey rink. I don't know how they changed that into storage, but it looks good there. So used to play hockey here. It was. Uh, I don't know, five seasons here, and then they built a new rink up in New Hampshire, or new rinks, but yeah, there's two rinks in here. Yeah, made a lot of friends playing hockey here. So I used to play hockey like full time, like, I don't know, skate 30 hours a week, work out 20, 30 hours a week, um, worked for a hockey camp, went to uh, like Colorado and stuff like that doing hockey camps and then we used to play horror organization we'd go down to like philadelphia junior flyers and up into canada played a few teams in canada as far as our regular season and then you had tournaments so like up in quebec and ontario so yeah the same old parking lot but you'd have to know that it was a hockey rink at one point because oh, yeah the zamboni used to come up no the zamboni came out the side i think the back Alrighty, well, there's some history of me because a lot of people don't know that I played hockey as aggressively as I did. I appreciate it. Have a good rest of the day. Bye. Okay. I got two insurance quotes. Yeah, both good guys. I got to line them up apples to app, make sure we're comparing apples to apples. Um, we're moving along. As I'm on the phone, 
realtor hits me up and says, hey, attorney wants to talk to your attorney. Making sure everybody's on the same page because that's where we struggled. Not everybody was on the same page. Not everybody was talking to the same people. So, yeah. A lot going on. A lot going on behind the scenes. And people who have actually gone through this, they know. But there's some people that are like, oh, why don't you hurry up? Why don't you do this? This is what my last six months has been. Four months? Four months? Yeah, four months. So, a lot of paperwork. A lot of just trying to keep everything rolling. Alrighty. Now we'll jump down the road and see where we're going. That is a sharp trailer. WJB or W? W-I-B? I think it was J. Alrighty, so here's where we're at. Oh, there you go. Got him. Am I pulling up more or are you pretty good? You're good there. Mark Shaw. <laughs> Drake, Massachusetts. Yes, sir. Shaw Dairy. The glass bottle, glass chocolate milk bottles. By far the best chocolate milk I've ever had. <laughs> I've heard that. Like, by far. Yep, absolutely. So. Normally everybody sees robots. This is the old. I know. The old, the old fashioned way of doing it. This was built. This was 2002. This is 1950, 1930 combination. Yep. Looks like a dungeon, kind of. But the cows don't seem to mind. No. <laughs> yeah. So how many cows are you milking now? 80. And you know, we got that whole split herd organic cows. We have certified organic cows yep. and conventional cows. That's what the piece of plywood down there divides out. Oh, They're okay. They go out on pasture. Freaking and everything into deal. milk or ice cream? Oh, oh the organic, everything milk. Everything yeah, milk is organic. The cream to separate out to make, uh, oh. to be able to make the ice cream with and do it all organic. And yep. there's not a huge market for it, you know. Uh, most, you know, like like scoop shops and whatnot, you know, they don't care. Yeah. Wow. Oh. And then you got the store across the street, which we're gonna have to go over yeah, there. Yeah, we'll we gotta get we gotta there. get some milk, you know. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Chase, how does <that> work? Sure. <laughs> so twice a day milking. Twice a day milking. A couple of times a day feeding. Our newest addition to the place. Good old Canadian Mexa, you know. But uh, now that we have the round bales, it's nice to drop around, but be able to, you know, grind up round bales yeah. in there, you know? And before then, you had a... Before we had a real mixer that was 35 years old. And just I dumped, scrapped dumped. it and kept the kept the uh, scale for Rossback for his <laughs> tractor way and but, set the fares and that was it. That was it. It had no value. We used to have the pitchfork to feed into the carts on a wooden chute, where now we got the conveyor. We moved up in the world significantly yeah. for feeding cows, you know? I mean, we were using that on roller down there. Yeah. You know? And you picked the, this and that up just recently, the two wagons. Yep, yeah, that was down in Pennsylvania. And, uh, it's, it's that nice. makes it a little more slick than a wheelbarrow, right? Yeah, well, we had cots. They were old, and they weren't made to handle the grass. Yeah. You know, the, the friggin' augers on them. Now, if you look at the augers on see the augers on these? I'm up, oh, yeah. That's what what did you have? Weaver lines or something before? No, no it was Bodco and um, what is the other one? Ubler. Oh, okay. Yep, we had one of each. Uh, and these things, I mean, they're nice. I, you know, I like, I like them. Yeah. And the guy was super to deal with, you know, the guy at J and J. He's awesome. Came he's out like, of I PA. don't take this stuff on tr on trade, but you can drop it. I'll fix it up, and I'll find somebody to buy it for you. And I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> you know, I love those guys. <laughs> yeah. You want to, I know you want to cash them out. Yeah. yeah. Mini loader. Mini loaders are amazing. So, being a stationary mixer, they bring feed in. A lot of mixer wagons, you see they're hooked to the back of the tractor, but if you're feeding like this, it's kind of a no-brainer. Goes right into the barn. A lot of baleage. You said the mixer was supposed to be here a year ago? Yeah, uh, we ordered it one year ago, two weeks ago. So it's been a year and two weeks since we ordered it. Our end of February delivery, and it was uh, July, first week of July delivery. And then the conveyor? I didn't have time in the summer to 
saw like the mayor came from wrestler in Pennsylvania, uh, and then we I think it's IH wrestler. I, I want to say that. Yep. I know there's a few of them, but I just went and picked that up last night. That was you know only like a two month wait time or something like that. That was what I picked up in Pennsylvania with the card. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So prior you were dumping it over oh, into God, it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, it was it was on blocks. There was a wooden chute, and we stood on a step ladder with a pitchfork and pulled it into the car. Yeah. <laughs> this is like our dream world right here. A little bit better off. Yeah. Yeah. Makes makes quite a bit. You had a reel before. Yeah. So vertical makes all the difference in the world right there. Oh god, yeah. Yeah, and our reel had been patched and relined <laughs> 15 years ago. Just like everybody else. What are you barking at? 50 horsepower motor. Pretty wild. As you see there's a scale here. And then the controls are actually inside of it, so you can turn everything on and off. Yeah. There's there's some sweet farms I've been to that stationary mixers some conveyors and stuff like that so we're loaded up didn't really give you guys a rundown but well, mark reached out to me and said hey i got this pressure washer it needs some love you you want it he said i'll tinker on it we'll figure it out so swung up here but clearly we're getting a full tour so this thing's sharp he said he bought it out of minnesota six thousand hours on it 77 10. i got a 3130 yeah so we're gonna jump across the street when i was a kid the store used to be right here here's the store now so he's gonna give us a little rundown of what goes on over here glass bottle milk is just it's just amazing like i there's something to be said about it so this is your means of transportation? This is our transportation. You, you don't know, use just a hitch five the, gallon buckets and walk it across hitch, the street? No, a hitch <laughs> on the front of the cat. We had the last railroad in Draken for years. We had railroad tracks when the bottling plant was next to the barn. Well, we pushed the tank manually. It was on a railroad I guess track. I don't remember the yeah. railroad tracks. I remember going in there. Yeah, no, that was pre-9-11. After 9-11, there was the food security stuff, so it had to be sealed up. Oh, So before, okay. it was pre-9-11. And then we switched to this, mount the compressor on the tongue, and. Yeah. It's sealed up, ready to go. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, it works out beautifully. So you got two tanks because organic and then conventional. Yep. yep. And then it all gets stored in the holding tank at the bottling plant where we are now. Okay. And, uh, you know, then it makes its way through. So, this is what happens if you don't ship the milk in a bulk tank. Yep. So, all of our milk runs in. This thing's a separator. It usually has a stack of cones and uses centrifugal force to knock the heavy cream to the outside and separates your fat free and your whole milk, uh, fat free and your cream just using centrifugal force. Okay. And then we put it all inside of that. So we low temp pasteurize it. So it's 150 degrees for 30 minutes, as opposed to short time, you get more life out of the milk. You get more day coat out of the milk but you've got to cook it closer to 200 degrees, but you can do it in a minute. That's oh, far okay. more efficient, but this is why the truck of milk tastes that much better off, basically. <laughs> you know? And then after it rolls through, the homogenizer is the reason people don't have to shake their milk. Everybody used to get cream wine milk and the cream on top that they would scoop off as a child. Yep. And this thing packs 2,000 pounds of pressure into the milk, so it all meshes together, and then you don't need to, there's not actually anything put in the milk to make it do that. It's just strictly pressure and on the molecular level, and then we cool it using water to get the temperature out of it. And then it comes over to the filler. It's uh, not a huge process. It's just expensive to keep up all the equipment and whatnot. Yeah, a lot of pieces that make it all worth it. Yeah, so you have to have air handling systems so that airborne bacteria never works its way in. And then everything obviously has to be stainless steel so we can bottle glass, plastic. You just change out all of these pots here. Everything would come out so oh. these are a half gallon size. And then you can That's swap it out to be a quart size. Uh, so you do everything on the same line? Yeah, everything goes right through here. And if it's glass, we come out here, it's a bottle washer that's older than both of us combined. <laughs> hey, that's a rare thing, right? Every new, new bottle washer is a quarter million dollars. So these old things, even if it's just a shell and, and the, the cages to them, are worth, you know, fifty, sixty thousand yeah. know? dollars. Uh, they're simple, simple machines. Everything's, you know, linkage based, as you can see. Yep. Spray bars in there, and that's it. Everything works off linkage. You know, when the linkage moves, 
it opens and closes valves and you know it uh that's how the so, thing all works so the linkage would take and kick these actually there is a switch if you hit that switch right there i think that's the light this, yep there you go so all these cages the whole thing goes and on the bottom of it there's oh. a tank where it soaks in caustic solution yeah comes up on the top and then the spray bars that spray water on each side of it to rinse it all out as it goes it hits a sanitizing bar at the end and then this would float down we do the only drawback is that this thing's busted right now so these would oh. be i have a broken spring so it's not pushing them out yeah so usually it would get pushed out and then this thing as it does its thing in one second and we'll knock them up usually the conveyor would be on and would kick them all out the that's that's pretty neat oh yeah there's nothing to these so yes. you you load them here and it goes through a full cycle yep exactly and, they come out and you just have to test you just have to test the caustic solution all the time and normally you'd heat it up if we were but going right now yep. um and then you can see all the spray bars i want to try i mean i've looked around for years to try to buy one i don't care the shape if i could take this one out to fix it up yeah problem is i mean you need it all the time so. yeah it's not like you can do without it for a week or right, two right but you know that for 50 grand you could redo this immaculate yeah in every way you know what put stainless liners and things everything but you know for a quarter of a million dollars it's hard to justify that yeah. amount of glass because they believe it or not when you give the customer the option we sold nothing but glass up until 2000 or right around 2000 we started plastic we are now at the point where we are 75 percent plastic really yeah when given the option people don't want to deal with bottle returns and it's not as that important to them yeah, yeah. but i mean you, yeah, you can't beat like you it. can't beat the glass it's far better off and it, and it works you know they pay the bottle deposit it saves on the packaging part of it you know um, so through the pandemic through the pandemic, I mean, the home delivery was going insane. I mean, everything was going insane. But for were you getting this. bottles back as far as glass, or yeah. was it mostly yeah, plastic? Yeah, you just need a lot more in circulation. Oh, you know, okay. I'd say the ratio stayed slower. the same. Yeah. But you gotta, you know, you think about it, every single place that sells the milk, you know, you probably got 10,000 bottles that are constantly circulating between all of your customers, what's in their, you know, their den or their garage. Yeah, you know I know I, mean? I got one on my uh, microwave. Exactly. It's been know? there for years and, and years and years. Put, put change inside of them. Yeah. So they, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you can't go, you can't go wrong with it. All right. Yeah. Yep. That's Seven awesome. Them labeled up as of a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at, we still get stuff like this back. Oh yeah. yeah. Before they were tamper evident, there was no second ring. Yep. So that bottle was from 1980. They stamped the date right in the bottom okay. of it. So 1980 was when that one was from. <laughs> I mean, like, this was an old holiday bottle that's been sitting up here because they got rid of it in 1995. Yeah. So we'll usually pull them out of circulation, but it, yeah. It, uh, yeah. I that's mean, insane. we've been getting them labeled for a while, and we still have non labeled ones. Yep. We've been getting them labeled for a couple of years at this point. You know? That's wild. Right? Yeah. So if anybody knows of a bottle washer, yeah, sitting around, yeah, absolutely. Put it, put it down know in the comments. Bottle get... washer, you're my best friend now, you know. <laughs> uh, but then we make our way out. All the milk comes right in. These racks probably are also older than both of us combined. Yep. Even the even like half the equipment in here was has been here my entire life. Yeah. We only replaced what was absolutely necessary to replace. Well, finding vats and stuff like that. Right, like, like this one we just bought new a couple of years ago. That's the first one we bought new since 1980. We bought yeah. two used ones in 1980, which are those two. Uh, and you know, it, it works pretty good. I mean, you can get them. It's just- It's the, just the a limited smaller, thing. And the smaller ones are more expensive because a lot of small dairies, so it's a lot of huge dairies. Yep. So when you hit that middle ground, they're actually pretty affordable. And obviously all the milk rolls in still use milk jugs like as if it was 1920 <laughs> back in the day they would lug it and then it all rolls through so, so this is behind the glass doors right behind the, so the farm store that's where it all flows through to so you do chocolate chocolate plain. banana strawberry fat free whole two percent we did blueberry and orange cream milk at one point in time we make iced coffee with Red Barn Coffee Roasters that's down around Worcester. Uh, they sell us the beans and we do the cold brew coffee. And then organic, we do the New England Organic Creamery is fat-free uh, fat 2% and whole. So, and every, you know, most of the stuff we do glass and plastic, yep. plus the small pints. 
Uh, and obviously we sell cream and that stuff, you know? Yep. And then the real good stuff ends up Real, the real best stuff. Inside. Inside. The ice cream? These are, yep. That's where all the uh, quarts of ice cream end up. Okay. So this entire thing is full of ice cream. And then uh, we, you know, this is the inventory that we keep all the time. And we make ice cream cakes out of it. So we end up with. You can just make ice cream cakes. Oh, really? You can pop those. That's yep. There's cold. There's a guy in North Andover that has these cold mold setups, and he makes them for all different hot shaped ones, small ones, big ones. Yep. You make the molds, and that's it. You know, it's awesome. So, what's ice cream compared to milk as far as how much you make of each? Uh, a lot more a milk. A lot more volume, gallons of milk. Much more profitable with ice cream. Oh, really? Back in the day, everybody bought fat-free milk. You took the fat out of it turned it into ice cream and sold it to them Okay. as ice cream. Now it's on the opposite. Now 65% of sales are whole milk. Whether it's because they think they get, there's a nefarious reason behind taking the cream out or if it's strictly because they figured out it's less cream than what they put in their coffee, but it's gone towards whole milk mo mostly. Huh. Uh, so that has affected us because now we don't have the cream for the milk. Yep. A lot different when you're buying the stuff, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. So how many, how many different flavors of ice cream? 52. Yep, all ready. Right okay. Here. We're getting the full tour, guys. Look at this. Oh, to be quite honest, at my age, I'm only 36, and I've already taught seven other farmers how to make ice cream, and I've taught three other guys how to bottle milk. Yep. And in my father's lifetime, those numbers are probably double or a little better. We always happily show everybody how to do it. Um, so well, e either you're going to diversify or you're going to milk a ton of cows. The problem is I buy everybody's heavy cream yeah. and I explain to them that they should be making ice cream. Then I lose my cream supply <laughs> yeah. because I teach them how to you're make ice cream. You're shooting yourself in the foot. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> so the ice cream machines up until recently, we had the same ones my grandparents bought. This, These two here are not that old. This one we actually got new Emory Thompson. The same you know, family still owns it that originally did 100 years ago. They made really? the first machine. And um, where are they from? They were originally in, in the Bronx, New York. Now they're in, um, they're in Florida. I know it's Flight Path Road. I forget the name of the town that they're in. And then we still have an ice cream filler. It's a hand crank filler. So you, you do all the product in there and that's what you actually Two and a half cranks for a quart of ice cream. So we make 40 quarts at a time and you're just making them in batches. So therefore it allows you, I mean, I can make a hundred different flavors if you want to make the labels, you know? Yep. It, uh, yeah, it works pretty pretty neat, you know. They're all self-contained and water-cooled. They last, I mean, 40, 50 years, these yeah. things will last. So they're expensive, but they last forever. And when you call, you get the owner of the company. <laughs> that, what more can you that, ask for? That doesn't happen ever. No, no, these guys are awesome to deal with, you know. They're phenomenal. They are phenomenal. Um, so how many days a week the plant run? Plant runs four days a week. Ice cream's only two days a week. Two days a week. You know, because you can do a pretty good volume if you have a few guys going. Yep. Yeah. We make, we can make a hundred batches of ice cream in a day, so if you figure it's ten gallons, so you can make a thousand gallons of ice cream with two machines and yep. a hand crank filler. So I've looked for a modern filler. There's no way to beat the efficiency of your own. Yeah. Because you could it's just, you know, I mean, without spending a fortune basically, you know. So we still I still have yep. not been able to get rid of that. Hey, old school is good, right? Yeah, I have no problem with it. It's, it's easy to maintain. Thanks very much. The store side. Yes. So we saw the behind the scenes Everything and then... Everything else is, makes it worthwhile right here. Nice. Basically. Cakes, pies, ice cream, all the milk, all the way along. And then everybody else's products that, you know, like chicken pies. Yep. Beach pizza from, uh, from Andover, from Triple E's pizza. So we, oh yeah. We have pizza that sell that, everybody loves that stuff. You know, we get man's orchard, apple crisp we sell. We, you know, you, trying to buy all the stuff that you can't get in the supermarket. Yeah, the unique cool stuff. Yeah. Extra flavor. And, of course, beef. Beef. All the bull calves. They're final, the final destination of the bull calves, along with, you know, we get seafood from a family operation up near the beach. Yep. And then you get some, you know, marinated tips and whatnot. Actually, the Oak, Oakdale stuff, 
Uh, I'm not sure where that stuff comes from, but the other stuff we sell over here, Dom's, they started uh, sponsoring the Patriots. Yep. So now they have commercials, so you can see. Yep. Same thing, same family owned it for years. Dominic is the, the you know, the grandson that is the current, you know, guy running the operation. They're super nice. They're in Malden, um, right around the corner from the casino there, actually. Yeah. So they're super guys to deal with, you know? A little bit of everything. How we doing? Donna, <laughs> just she's a real boss behind the scenes. You're the chief. I know who you are. You, Hi, Chris. Nice to meet you. It's on Sunday, I just brought in another scoop up. Forty six. Oh, forty six degrees. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I only had one. I said on a <laughs> Sunday. Yeah, and forty six. Winter hasn't showed up. Coming out on a Sunday. Sunday is the busiest yeah. day, anyways. Yeah. So for forty six, I'll need two people. Yeah. Right. And on top of that, it's just even when the, when the economy goes down. Going out for an ice cream with your family is a very affordable way to have a night out with your kids. Yeah. So ice cream tends to, you know, I mean, always it's it's an easy way to get your kids out of the house and make them happy, you know. So you're year round open for ice cream. Yeah. Right? Yes, especially since we turned it into a bakery, you know. Yeah. We we limit the hours, you know. Um, but yeah. Really? <laughs> no way. Only by a couple hours. We open an hour later because it's the during winter. The week, only during the week. During the week. Right. Like bake. Yeah. We were right. Yeah. So much, I needed all this space. Okay. Right. And then they're yeah. knocking on the window for ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. So how how many different things do you bake? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> Start adding them up. Well, I got sixteen pies in there now. <laughs> but how many different varieties are there? There's what, like ten muffins and ten pies. Yeah. Ten muffins, ten pies. Yep. So you can buy a lot of the stuff Four ready cookies, to go. Five cookies. Yeah. I already did all the cookies. cookies. They're all cooling off. And then we make our whoopie, we make whoopie pie filling, and then we get whoopie uh, pies oh, and make those. Oh, make really? Those. Oh, yeah. Well, we used to buy the bacon joint, but during the pandemic, they couldn't, they had to shut it down. Yep. They couldn't move it was going into the holidays. Yep. We no, sold, you needed that product. We sold 90 platters of whoopie pies for Christmas Eve last year. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. So, right. finding that cream, what the hell? So, yep. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the business that, that whose backbone was milk and ice cream has now morphed to the point yeah, where those you gotta are diversify. only half. Right, yeah. I mean, they might come for milk, but then they really come for Donna's personality. <laughs> Should I shut the camera off she so you can hit him? She's my shenanigans, <laughs> so she's perfectly fine with it, you know? I'm here all leaving tonight on a jet plane. Yeah, see you. Going you know. on vacation? I don't know when I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in charge of bacon yeah, now. That's fine. That's fine. I come back. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Donna had her own restaurant for years, so luckily we got the right point in time. She got sick of dealing with, you know, having employees. Yep. Came here and started dealing with our employees. I was only supposed to be part-time, part, you know, a few mornings a week. Yep. Yeah. It morphed into this. Yeah. Three weeks. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, you know, it's not very often you find somebody who's had a business that knows how to. Still working, so right. right. Yeah. And we're just such joys yep. to work around. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> all those like mixed nuts and stuff that you see at all those places? That's it comes from there? Arcade snacks, yeah. yeah. I didn't that's know that. I on Chronicle on them a couple of months ago. I went. Yep, yep. But that's why I said it started with milk and ice cream. Mm -hmm. Everything I else. Money to eat, he pretty much told me just get whatever I want. So what do you guys want? Within reason, because <laughs> I assume that he's not going to go crazy. No. But my brother definitely, he wanted some whoopie pies the other day. Yeah. I know, right? Whoopie pies and definitely need some chocolate milk. That's that coffee. There you go. Carlson's apple cider. Yeah, of can't go wrong there. What else are you, gonna do? <laughs> you can't do you can't not sell Carlson stuff, you know? I know, especially in this area. If you're in Massachusetts, right. And we still sell non-homogenized milk where the cream separates the top. Oh yeah? Yep. And again, you give people the option that it separates the top, you sell next to nothing. Yep. You know? It's a, it's a funny one, you know? That's wild. Right? Yep. And as you can see, from the, how much organic milk is on the shelf, yep. you sell almost nothing here. Yeah. Because people that come here don't need the organic label. That's yep. more of a wholesale driven thing. You know? There's a niche market to that side of it, I Correct. guess. Correct. And it's mainly all in the city of Boston, you know, and within 128, yep. say, you know? Uh, mm. But yeah, man. Don't be bashful. I mean, by all means, you know. Lighten up chocolate so, milk. Yeah, we made light chocolate milk again because people want to be healthy. You know how much of it sells? Nothing compared to the good <laughs> stuff. The people <laughs> the want good the stuff. option when they're talking about it, and when they're given the option, they want. They want the good stuff still. That's just the way it is. <laughs> 
Huge shout out to Mark giving us a tour. You guys got the rundown of it. Actually, got to jump out, get a thumbnail picture. Um, yeah. I wasn't expecting to go through the plant or any of that, but he's like, anything you want to see. So, I'm going to pull over here. Ooh. somebody alrighty well we saw the cows we got a pressure washer we're gonna mess around with might work might not work he hooked it up we got the hose we got some spare parts um, we'll probably have to put some effort into some parts and stuff like that but yeah that is I've been looking for a pressure washer as you guys know on the channel and I really appreciate it so appreciate him watching watching the videos I appreciate the chocolate milk Whoopie pies for my brother. Yeah. You have a fun time, buddy? We got some solar panels out here on marginal ground, as they were saying. They actually manage, they they lease the panels, I think is what the, the equipment, and they manage uh, it themselves, which was pretty neat. It goes back into the grid, but they get utilized, what, what they don't utilize goes back into the grid, so pretty neat technology there they were talking about how uh, they're working on getting batteries so that they can store energy for uh, the highs and lows of the usage of the grid but that took a lot longer than I expected but that was a good tour um, never got to never been in the plant before so now it's three o'clock I was gonna do some yeah nice sharp setup I was gonna do uh well I gotta jump home and see exactly where we're at on time time frame. Yeah, see, this is the fun of being in the city. I've gone two miles in the last 10 minutes. It's sweet. Here's the rundown of what we did. Went and picked up this bad boy. So, Mark watches the videos, you know. And you guys watch the videos, so if you haven't done so, make sure you're subscribed. It does help the algorithm. We got the hose. We got a pressure washer. Needs a little bit of love on some certain things, and well, once we get it figured out, we're gonna tinker around. And as Mark said, if you can use it, use it. If you can use some parts off it, use it. S see what's up. So I figured we'll mess around, see what we can do. Little tinker project. He did hook me up with a float, maybe some possible parts to get it all back going. The switch got broken out, so we'll have to just mess with that. But. Yeah, and we'll just need a gun handle, but we'll get plugged in soon and we'll mess around and see what we need to do to make this run again. He upgraded to a larger one. Well, he had a newer one. Then he went to a larger and as, yeah, having good uh, hot water pressure washer is a must in my opinion. So appreciate it, Mark. Um, appreciate the tour, but we'll get this unloaded. Um probably wait for some help I'll get this unloaded this box trailer will get washed at some point and it will be so much better um, it has been raining we're gonna have to get this unhooked and probably get going in our continued to move stuff around so I appreciate you guys watching along though yeah we'll see if this works if it doesn't it is what it is we still got a tour and we got some great chocolate milk so appreciate you guys watching along like and subscribe and being part of the channel and uh i'll see you guys on the next one have a good one